three, two, one. Voice with Julia, change your voice, change your lives. Hi everyone and welcome to Voice with Julia's Technique Talks, where we demystify conversations surrounding vocal technique with behind the scenes access to great singers of today. I'm your host, Julia Radosh, and with me here today is Rebecca Davis. Hi, Hi Becky. Hi. So nice to have you here. Nice to be here. And let me just let you all know how awesome Becky is. I'm going to read you a little bit of her amazing bio. Lyric soprano Rebecca Davis's voice has been characterized as powerful, majestic, captivating, elegant, and thrilling to the bone. And I just want to state that was all one caption from one review all in a row. So yes, that's awesome. Uh, Rebecca made her Chicago Symphony Orchestra debut in 2008, singing Salambo's aria from the movie score of Citizen Kane. In 2006, Rebecca debuted at Carnegie Hall, singing with Mid-America Productions, and returned in 2012 to sing with the American Symphony Orchestra in Mahler's Eighth Symphony. Rebecca has appeared with such companies as Hanover Staatsoper, where she began a fest position in 2013, Opera San Jose, Theater Bremen, Theater Freiburg, Stadttheater Bremerhaven, Theater für Niedersachsen, Chicago Opera Theater, Sarasota Opera, Kentucky Opera, Festival Opera, Livermore Valley Opera, Dayton Opera, Opera North, Opera Idaho, Fresno Grand Opera, DuPage Opera Theater, Midsummer Mozart, Hidden Valley Opera, Opera Santa Barbara, and San Francisco Opera's prestigious Merola program. That's a lot of opera companies right there. That's a lot of opera. It's <laughs> a lot of opera. <laughs> Rebecca's repertoire includes Violetta, Fior di Ligi, Uzalka, Ilia, Mimi, Michaela, Tatiana, The Countess, Donna Elvira, Adama Butterfly, Tosca, Baby Doe, and Magda in La Rondine. The last season saw Rebecca singing her first Constanza in Die Entführung aus dem Serrell with Opera San Jose, a dream role debut as Madame Butterfly at the Hanover Staatsoper, with role reprisals as Erste Dame and Helena in A Midsummer Night's Dream. Rebecca also appeared with Theater für Niedersachsen on a Mozart Salieri concert, singing arias from Mozart and Salieri operas, as well as newly rediscovered leader from both composers. Rebecca has earned numerous singing awards, including the grand prize of the Chicago Bel Canto, finalist of the Tri-State Region in the Metropolitan Opera Competition, finalist of the Renati Tabaldi and the Jose Iturbi Competition, as well as the 2012 winner of the Irene Dallas Competition. Wow, Becky, that's awesome. So I have to ask you because uh, probably a lot of people don't know this aria. I randomly was introduced to this aria and it's absolutely freaking awesome. Um, yeah. Salambo's aria from Citizen mm -hmm. Kane. Uh, what was that like? First of all, for any of you who don't know this aria, I'm going to post a link because this thing is off the hook and it's freaking it's hard. So, so theatrical, but it's, it's so, it's so French is what it is. It's mm -hmm. if you can imagine Thais on crack, like yeah. it's a little bit like that. Like if you can sing Thais, you could do Salambo's aria. For sure. It's, it's got the same range. It's got the same coloring. Mm -hmm. um, it's got the, the high D. Um, uh, Thais is an optional D, but um, yeah, it's got a nice D at the end. And it's just so, it's a little bit exotic, fun, mm -hmm. you know, for it, because it was written for Citizen Kane and for this opera singer, um, this opera singer that was being given opportunities to sing opera um by her love so um and we all want that don't we but anyway <laughs> <laughs> but anyway it, it's an amazing movie and in this uh concert we had a lot of different uh parts by Hermann um from alfred alfred hitchcock movies mainly and then um and things were like on the screen in back of us while we were performing and it was, you know, like a lot of different elements into this performance. It was really cool. Um, Joel McNeely was the uh, 
um, conductor, and he writes for a lot of Disney films. And oh, so he's wow. Got a lot of, yeah, he's got a lot of uh, theatric, theatrical work that he does and is composing as well. So it was, That's awesome. it was a great experience, one of a, one of a kind, for sure. Did you, have to sing, did you have to sing the Ari after the theme from Psycho? <laughs> I, think, I think we were before Psycho. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we were, we were before Psycho. Psycho and uh, yeah, I think we kind of opened up the concert because it was more of a like a lead into the more dramatic stuff. Um, that came yeah, in. so that's awesome. Mm -hmm. Did that take um, did that take a lot to like learn and kind of work that into your voice, or does that feel I like didn't, natural? I didn't so have a whole lot of time. I only oh, okay. had like three or four weeks. Um, wow, before, before I had to do it, so it it was pretty quick. Um, I don't know, I can't remember the, what happened between it, but uh, I was recommended for, for that concert. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if the soprano had dropped out or um, because it was a hard aria, or I, I don't know what happened, but um, I did, I'm, I'm a yes person. So I just kind of looked at it really quick and said, yeah, I'll, I'll do it. So, and luckily it fit. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I understand that I'm the same way. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, Actually, speaking to that, okay, because I, the, the first introduction, just for all of you who are watching, I actually know Becky, um, but the first introduction I had to her, I actually didn't know her, and it was through her singing, and it was watching her on YouTube singing Quil Bel Sonio, and here's the thing, that aria, um, you know, for, for lighter instruments, it's it's not a, not a problem, but Becky's voice is beautiful and lush and I was just struck by the ease and the power and the grace in your singing of that like I was really really just like wow damn who is this chick and I'm so glad I get to know her <laughs> well I felt the same way about you because I was oh. watching what you were doing with your technique talks and um, your YouTube channel and I also felt like we were kind of spirits in a lot of ways so I'm really glad that we're doing this today oh. and that we also are working together in other ways so it's very cool. yay. yay awesome <laughs> so so I'd love you to tell me a little bit about because you know there's so much about your technique that I admire and I'd love you to kind of walk us through what you know what goes through your mind how you how your process is what you're working on Mm -hmm. um, I know in our pre-discussion, yeah. you had said to me that kind of the two things that you like to focus on a lot are breathing and the passaggio. Mm -hmm. So I'd love to maybe start with, we, we can start with breathing if you want and kind of mm -hmm. go from there. What do you think? Okay. Um, I just, you know, I want to tell you quickly and, you know, for people tuning in, I'm going through kind of a technique change. Um, because physically I was unable to do the technique that I sang with for 15 years um, professionally. And um, uh, I had uh, my uh, appendix burst and I had to have two surgeries where they had to cut into my stomach um, from the belly button down. And so I, the, the muscles in my old technique, which I did kind of like a push uh, at the belly button level to, to, for support, um, which was pretty consistent for me for a long time, uh, started to fail me. So I, I started, also, the muscles started separating and this happens a, a lot to women too, who are, have gone through a pregnancy The you know, mm -hmm. the muscles, the diastasis recti um, will separate. But mine was doing that because I had an incision Oh. Um, and uh, then was pushing against that incision and also started back into singing um, full time 10 weeks after that, um, oh. after those two um, operations. So, mm -hmm. and in a way, I did that because I'm just kind of a, a very, I don't know, I, I push myself very hard. And if there's a possibility, then I, I, I always take it. And I was also, it was a premiere that I was really looking forward to that I had uh, prepared for before the summer break. And then this happened like right at the last week of rehearsal, in rehearsal, my appendix burst. Um, 
which is kind of a funny story oh now. But, uh, <laughs> but anyway, I, the operation didn't happen until 48 hours later. And by then, oh. gangrene and some issues. So, oh my God. Yeah. So it's, it was a, it was a process to, to come back after that. But um, I had a strong technique, which I, then I was yeah. able to sing. But at, at a point, that technique then let me down because it was too hard on my body. Yeah. And for, for somebody who's very physical and, and intact, you know, then yeah. it, it might work for them. But for me, I needed to look for more of a healing uh, technique. Um, mm -hmm. So I came in contact with a great teacher, Neil Samer. And so I'm still learning after, um, I think I started working with them two years ago, two and a half years mm -hmm. ago. So um, it's what, what I do now is actually... I'm finding a new step in my career because now I have a little bit more flexibility. He actually helped me to sing one of the hardest roles, the Constanza in abduction in, in San Jose. Um, it was something I worked on for a whole year and with, you know, his healing technique, it became a lot easier for me to do. It, it's still, it's still a double of a role, but um, you know, it, he made it, possible and uh, ultimately mm -hmm. successful for me. So um, so what I want to say about my technique is I'm, I'm going through a change right now. And mm -hmm. also my, my voice is changing. I'm going more into Spinto repertoire, which yeah. is fun. Yeah. Bucket list <laughs> roles are, are <laughs> right? Those bucket list roles that you put and you start in your twenties and people are like, wait, exactly. wait, 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 wait. <laughs> I'm like, oh, can I take the bucket out now and start digging in there? Because yeah, <laughs> now I can be Tonka. <laughs> Get the bucket. <laughs> That's awesome. So, um, yeah. So breathing wise, um, yeah, I don't, I don't push at the belly button now. I okay. actually it's a much deeper connection all the way to the pelvic floor. Okay. And um, and so this the the breath is very free. Um, mm -hmm. Neil works with a, a body heart mind connection, and then mm -hmm. the the function of that is kind of a chiaroscuro, yin yang, which we yeah. the canto technique that, <laughs> that we all love. And um, so, I had to work in in a new coordination with my body, with mm -hmm. the breath, with and it was more of a release. I mean, I've always been a forward, forward placement, drive it a little bit. And I've done roles that have helped in the, in the, in, you know, the scuro part of it, where I was always given the chiaro, the front, right? And so Rondine is an example, you know, you have to be nice and round in it. So mm -hmm. I think the roles helped me out with my technique too, because mm -hmm. I always kind of wanted this, this forward drive. Um, but now I have to recognize that in in I, where I am in my career right now. Now I want to go for those dri more driving roles, Aidas and things. And so if I drive what's already driven, then you're way too out in front and you don't have that balance. So I'm working on that scudo balance being deep in the body and, um, you know, speaking more from the heart, mm -hmm. being more into this column that feels to me to be so uh, connected into my body and that just flows out where before I always felt this column but I think the column was more forward and I fought against myself a little bit to get that that open depth um, in the back so mm -hmm. here it's already it's there for me and I can actually speak very clearly through that connection because it's just coming from me it's my yeah. you know my um, you know it's my chest resonance is open that it's all open so yeah. that the breath you know as was always kind of a natural breath but now it it feels like there's this drop that happens into the pelvic floor uh -huh. so I drop it and then I open and keep everything you know in balance things connected okay. forward with a smile and then you know the pucker which kind of yeah. balances it uh, open in the throat and the tongue is loose uh -huh. so there's four things that happen you know, in the, mm -hmm. before I even breathe and then I drop and then, um, I lean and, but my lean is not just at my belly button, which it used to be okay. right now. The lean is more 
360 around oh. the rib, around the ribs. Yeah. And there's that lean that stays, um, you know, the solar plexus in front and the, the ribs stay out. Yeah. And then, and then there's this just gentle flow that comes from the pelvic floor that there's this, um, it just feels very, it's very natural, but it yeah. took coordination to get back to the natural because I'd, I'd always had kind of a, a very pressed support. And um, mm -hmm. this is something that, you know, Caballé used to teach and I did a master class with her where we literally had these um, two kilo, um, what do you call them when you do Kettlebells? exercises? Like, a, you know, those discs that go on the end that oh, you lift? Yeah. The, yeah, yeah the, the, the bells, I, I don't know what to uh -huh. call them. <laughs> yeah. I can't think of the word, but those discs, they're like discs. Yeah. She would have us lay down on the floor and put the discs on our stomach, and then we would breathe, and we'd have to keep the disc up. And then oh. we would sing, and the disc had to stay up. And this was the technique that I used for many, many years. Wow. Stay up. And eventually, you know, at the end of your breath, it, it does come down. Yeah. But then you would push it back up before you would sing. And that's- Wow. Like, her main technique and okay. it helps her long lines and things like that. Yeah. Um, and that works for a lot of singers, but you know, uh, for, for some of us who are craving more of a natural production and um, yeah. I totally recommend, you know, doing more of this heart, mind, body connection technique that Neil does. Um, and I know a lot of teachers work in this way also, but um it's, it's been open eye opening for me because I've always been more of a, I knew the support that I was using, but yeah. I was more intuitive and, and feeling of what my body was doing. If something was tight, I always felt it. I could always release the jaw. Right. Yeah. And I would work with different teachers on different issues at different points in my career. Yeah. Um, but I feel like this is a complete connection of all those things and hmm. it's right when I needed it too. So um, and also the other thing that's new to me is, and I know we talked about maybe talking about this too, is, um, the passaggio. Mm -hmm. I had many teachers who would talk about the passaggio and would maybe give me bowel modifications, but I didn't understand physically what I needed to do through that. So yeah. I don't think I did it as consistently as I could have. Mm -hmm. And so I would work the, the difficult places as an aria with a vowel modification. Um, but the, the thing is, I, and then I, I studied with Bergonzi also for two months, which was also oh, wow. amazing. Um, he, he was an amazing teacher, and I learned so much um, from him. And he is, you know, he, he helped me with dynamics and, um, and thinking of the, the voice more in this, the column you know, and that the bottom and the top notes are even or, and equal, yeah. I should say. And, and for me, that was a, a good concept at that time. I was 22. So, mm -hmm. um, you know, not, not feeling like you have to go up for a high note or press right. down for a low note. That was, a, that was the thing I was working on at that time. So, he, you know, he, he, it was in the column, it was buoyant and um, even. So um, the thing is that I didn't understand that at the passaggio, actually this narrowing has to happen mm -hmm. before we can open back oh, yeah. up, right? And so for the last couple of years, this has really helped. I mean, this has helped me get, get through the Constanza because it's all the setup to be able to do all the, the flippy stuff on the top, right? Um, mm -hmm. And it's also the way you set up a, an amazing high note, you know, is because mm -hmm. you're usually jumping from the passaggio. So, um, having that kind of that narrowing and we can talk about narrowing, but how do you do it? Right. Right. I, the, the <laughs> teach it different ways. You know, maybe they talk about narrowing in, in the vowel, like an ooh vowel or something like that. But what my teacher Neil would say was do this sound. Uh, uh, like that. Uh, uh -huh. mm -hmm. It's, uh, it, it closes the throat without actually closing it. Uh, so there's air coming through it. So you yeah. might, you know, as you're doing your ooh vowel or your uh -huh. whatever vowel through there, you also want that uh, it actually physically uh -huh. will narrow 
without. You know, it reminds me of that. Yeah, it reminds me of the the little baby sound. Yes. Mm -hmm. It's exactly a baby sound. Yeah. Uh huh. Wow, yeah, I love it. It's also a good good way to 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 talk about Passaggio. Um, because I had some feedback, you know, in early in early in my career that you know my my high notes were maybe a little bit too wide. It was because I wasn't doing that right. Mm -hmm. In the, mm -hmm. in the passaggio and now it feels like you know if i do that prep in the passaggio it just goes flip right yeah. back, right up and then it's it's in a controlled not controlled where i feel like i'm controlling it but it feels more directional instead of like wonk wonk <laughs> wonk you know which yeah. we don't want <laughs> so especially if you're doing like really high stuff so I mean, oh yeah not that that's my specialty but i do like to flip up to a d or i used yeah. to do a lot but mm -hmm. not so much now. Yeah, I think, okay, you've just like presented so much information. Can, can we go back? Yeah, no, go back. no, it's, <laughs> I want to go back because you said some really interesting things. Okay. Back, and we're, we're going to get back here to the Passaggio. So ladies and gents, stay tuned. <laughs> um, <laughs> let's, let's walk back to, I, I want to end with the heart, body, mind connection, by the way. Yeah. So let's just table that. Cause I think that's one of the most that, important it's things. It's huge. It's huge. It's huge. So let's, we're going to save that for the end folks. Get okay. ready. Okay. And, and now let's talk about the breath. So you obviously made this change from the belly push out, you know, really aggressive mm -hmm. to this more 360 pelvic mm -hmm. floor. Can you, <clears throat> now you were talking about the setup before the breath even happens. Mm -hmm. First of all, when we, when you talk about pelvic floor, mm -hmm. are you referring to the Kegel muscles? What are you, what are you actually referring to? Yeah, I'm talking about like all the way down to the sphincter, like Kegel, all that stuff down there, that whole- So you squeeze your butt, you squeeze your butt, you squeeze your Kegels, no, no. Uh-uh, but I feel all the way down there, an, a release and an opening. So it but opens, it doesn't squeeze. It, when, it, when you do breathe, it does, you do feel a little bit of a squeeze, but you don't wanna squeeze it. You don't want that tension. Um, it's more of, so it's, it's four parts that Neil teaches. It's an, it's an opening, the setup mm -hmm. of the, um, you know, a smile, um, mm -hmm. a yawn, a pucker, and mm -hmm. a release of tongue. Okay, so there's okay. four things in the, in the breath. And it's not an audible breath. And there's yeah. no fast breath because you want the breath to go through a bigger hole mm -hmm. that's relaxed. Because as okay. soon as you start, and I, this is, I know, contention with people who do the sniff breath, but when you sniff, look at my nose. Yeah. It closes, right? Mm -hmm. And you want open and you want no stress in that area. So I really, it's an, and I, you know, I don't think of just the mouth because if you close off the nose, you get less breath in that's relaxed. So yeah. I think of it as a nose mouth opening. Okay. Mm -hmm. and and that the tongue is released forward okay. and you have you have things going in different directions that yin yang what's the back of the tongue doing at this time because people talk about the tongue <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> it's it's really relaxed um but uh yeah because i know we ha you in one of your discussion groups uh they were talking about you know sometimes i do feel it on the back of my teeth Sometimes, but I really just concentrate on it, not over analyzing it actually, right. unless it becomes held in some way. And then I'm like, where, what am I doing with that? It's yeah. more of a, just a doing of reminding that it needs to relax. It's yeah. like, just like a lump of, of very soft, like a, a very soft clay or a, mm -hmm. it's almost like, it's almost like a slug. Just let like it in your mouth. <laughs> <laughs> like a wet that's, slug. That's appetizing. <laughs> My son was poking at one the other day on the ground, so that's why I thought of it. <laughs> They're slimy slugs. Um, but it, it's just kind of, it's relaxed forward. Okay. And mm -hmm. um, I mean, when we sing, when we present on stage, you're not going to see the uh, uh, out, but that's what it's going to feel like, right? Yeah. Um, and then if you feel any tension with it. I mean, as you speak, it's, it should be natural. You shouldn't, uh, that's part of my problem also is I overthink 
things sometimes and I have to <laughs> kind of just grab myself and start go say, go through the steps again. Mm -hmm. Are you smiling? Are, do you have that space of a yawn? Are you, um, let's see, what's, a, uh, what's the third one that I usually do? That's lips. Brain. Lips. Oh, the lip fucker. Yeah. This releases, yeah. right? It, it, it's in opposition to the smile. Exactly. And then the tongue releases. Okay. Okay. You have said, <clears throat> now this is really important because mm -hmm. this is not something we hear often, right? Mm -hmm. This, the facial muscles and how important that is mm -hmm. and the balancing of the face mus muscles. Resonance, resonance areas, you know, you got to optimize them, these bones. Yeah. Get them vibrating. Absolutely. So that's, yeah, that's that chiaro part that we want, mm -hmm. chiaro scuro. We want that, that lift. And for those that are watching that are having trouble, like, the, the separation of this muscle from this muscle, mm -hmm. how do you work on that? That's the pucker. Yeah, so how do you, how do you separate so that you can do both at the same time? It's, it's coordination. Um, that it took me, like I said, it took me a while to really get this. The cool thing about working with Neil was, you know, I would see him every two to three months um, and he would say, listen, we're digesting a lot of information here. You're gonna work on it, but Obviously, you need to be on the stage still. You just do what you default to when you need to, but maybe keep working and see what you can change mm -hmm. little by little. And eventually, and especially with the breath, because it's really a coordination between starting with this openness mm -hmm. that we just talked about, and then doing the drop, and mm -hmm. then um, leaning, right? And then the breath coming up, and that, that gentle support and squeeze from the, from the pelvic floor. Right. Okay. So, um, you know, it is, it took some coordination. So at some points I did the opening and then, and then I had to wait and then do the drop and then lean. And so sometimes it felt like, you know, like when you're learning how to do some new sport and you do things very slowly through it. And yep. then eventually you can just do it in one motion. And all yeah. of a sudden, it's like this. And um, because he wanted to get me to the point, because I took very active breaths. And when I say active, I mean loud. <laughs> 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 you know, I, before, before singing, I'd be the kind of, yep. you know, and even though it was open, I was still making an audible breath, which would dry. After right. a while, it dries you out. I take a breath now that has no sound. Mm -hmm. I've, I've just let the, the, the um, pelvic floor open and I've done this mm -hmm. drop and gravity automatically takes in air mm -hmm. through the lungs and the diaphragm of course goes down. I don't actually, I mean, there's a, there is a slow breath that happens, but it's not audible. It, yeah. And it, sometimes it's like, I know you guys, uh, you did um, an episode about don't breathe, you know, mm -hmm. um, I think, and it's kind of a bit like that. It's like a, you, you don't have to think about the part of breathing yeah. because it's already there and you can do it when you get the coordination of this, it goes, it goes really quick. So, yeah. um, to demonstrate, I mean, it would be better if I could do it full body, but I open and I drop and then I lean out. Right. And then I, with the obliques, lean out with the obliques. I lean, I lean the rib cage. Rib and cage. Okay. Mm -hmm. And um, the, of course, the other muscles underneath are going, but I don't feel them as much as I used to. I mean, okay. because before, you know, like I said, at the belly button, I really felt that <laughs> all the way in the, you know, at the obliques and the mm -hmm. um, lower muscles. But um, all those muscles are active and leaning, but I feel it more in the rib cage at the yeah. solar plexus and around. So... And, and it's not as, as pushed as it was. Mm -hmm. It's just like a, it's just the recognition that I am actually leaning. Um, and so as I lean, the, the, the breath comes up from the floor, from the uh -huh. pelvic floor. And then I release back into the open position at the end of the phrase. So and open back up into what is already a breath that has been taken. Wow. I'm ready That's, for the next thing. It, it, you know, the next phrase yeah. quickly because I've already prepped it. Um, yeah. That 
open back up. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that's, I mean, that's the method that I'm, I'm using right now and um, I'm still working through, you know, it's, yeah. kind of a, I sang an old aria um, last week where I noticed I was, I was like, okay, I did not get this coordination quite as much in a couple places. And I was like, what, what is that breath? That's not my breath. You know, that's the old breath. Get out, get out of there. So, yeah. Yeah. How do, how do offsets, how do offsets play into the whole breath system? Like cutoffs and all of that. So I, I, I stop singing the phrase and usually I mean, as in the repertoire that I do, I have a lot of things where I diminuendo out of a, out of a end of a phrase. And then, you know, I feel that forward and back pull for the end of the phrase. And then okay. I open. Okay. And then I go back into my open and I'm ready. I'm ready for the next one, you know, and if I yeah. have time, I will just kind of, you know, hold that open and then maybe go into more relaxed position until I actually need yeah. the breath again and then I'm back into it and mm -hmm. really it happens in a split second now so I don't yeah. need to think okay I need to <gasps> with the orchestra because that just dries you out oh yeah you know? totally and I used to do it and it works it works for some people that, that have that yeah athletic cap capability but I just don't have that anymore so I just right. I'm going for that natural uh, mm -hmm. connection for myself it's more therapeutic let's say yeah therapeutic and I method. think that I love how you say that, that like it, other things can work for other people. I think that's the point that I really want to make with the series is that for all of the great singers, there are as many different ways to do things. Sure. Some things line up like, you know, <laughs> there are basic fundamentals of physics that can't be denied, but in between there's a lot of, you know, room for working with your body and what it needs at a specific time and that can change yeah um yeah. what what is interesting is when you, okay so you talk about these functional movements right and so mm -hmm. i i assume you're training the function of what you're actually going to be doing but were there any isolation exercises that you were given for these new breathing muscles that were maybe not in direct correlation with how you would be breathing Normally? when singing yes um no i mean this is really supposed to be this this method is a really uh just a return to a natural baby's function and breath okay um that's you know the the rise of the stomach and that it, it the stomach falls you know and when the baby is mm -hmm. breathing when they're sleeping you know and when you can watch them um the the stomach my stomach is not held out anymore. It's, yeah. there is a, there is the lean that keeps the rib cage more open, but my, mm -hmm. you know, that, that natural breath, mm -hmm. um, you know, it keeps a, it, you start with a feeling of that fullness because you're, you're leaned out and you have this breath, this new breath in your, you, but it, it goes out with the phrase yeah. and it, it comes in naturally, whether mm -hmm. it's, you know, like if it's a, if it's really forte and it's a really directed, it's going to go out quicker than, uh, than a, a spun, beautiful pianissimo line where you're going to feel it, you know, kind of gradually, you know, flow out. But it's, it, it goes in very naturally now. So, yeah. That's, so it's wow. not always in this book. Right. You know, for me. Right. Exactly. Cause I, I find that there, and I, you can feel free to agree or disagree. I find that there's a direct connection sometimes between the hardening of the front belly and the larynx. So, mm -hmm. and, and like you were saying, I mean, it's different in every body. Like there are ways to do it without tensing, but in general, if you feel that, uh, the larynx kind of lost. And do you think of the larynx as part of your breathing mechanism? Do you feel um, anything active there? I mean, I, I don't, it's, it's, again, it's, it's going to float very naturally with this opening you know it's going to lower naturally i don't think about lowering um mm -hmm. I, I just think more about the flow of the breath and make sure it, it, you know the lean is correct for the support and for me it's just making sure right now that that the opening happens in a 360 way that it's that i do have enough back space open that i do have 
the chiaro, the mm -hmm. front smile in there, that I do have the pucker um, yeah. to release, you know, and um, the tongue tension gone, you know, so that I can just speak naturally. Yeah. And, um, I mean, that's, that's what I'm working on mainly right mm -hmm. now. I, before it was more of this drop that, that was probably the first thing I had to really coordinate because I, I pushed, I, yeah. and it did tense be, and I, my voice would get more, uh, would get tired quicker, you know, as, as a younger singer, you know, mm -hmm. when people are like, you need to take two days off between performances. I needed that two days off perform between yeah. performances. I don't need that now. I can, I sing Fear to Lead You one night and Mimi the next night. And it's not an issue. That's awesome. So, yeah. And, but yeah. that's, you know, you have to know what, what you're doing in your technique to, to help or to hinder. Mm -hmm. And I didn't know that at the time. I just thought people said, you need that time to, to recoup. Well, you might not <laughs> if you figure out how to really sing naturally. <laughs> yeah, yeah, for sure. When, you, when you're working in, in German Fest, you don't, you know, you don't get that opportunity as much. You have to, you might be in a rehearsal in the morning, although you can mark, and then in the evening, you might, in a really heavy time of the schedule, be performing something else, yeah. completely different repertoire. So, right, right. That's yeah, that's a challenge. That's for sure. Really yeah. test your technique. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, now I'd love to talk about the passaggio. Okay, great. Yeah. yeah, because so you were talking about this narrowing. Okay, mm -hmm. just to kind of recap for so you're going to narrow and describe some sensations of this narrowing, either audible sensations that you hear in your own head or like physical sensations that you feel when you're narrowing correctly? I, I mean, I always try to hear the sound that I want before I sing. Okay. That's kind of, I mean, before, especially in, in tricky areas where in passaggio areas. Um, I mean, before I start a phrase, I think, I think of what sound I want mm -hmm. to come out of my mouth mm -hmm. or body. Um, and then as I'm singing and I know my passage is coming up in EFG land of um, I the fun remember. area, <laughs> right? <laughs> and I'm talking about just my upper passage my lower yeah. passage is just more about releasing and making sure I don't mm -hmm. grab anything. But the upper passage for me is um, the one where I have to really narrow the most. And I think of this, uh, 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 it's it's a it's free but it's also kind of girdled i have to yeah. say and uh, it's got uh, 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 yeah it's got this it's almost like a but like uh, my tongue, kind of sound I, my tongue's fully yeah. out uh, uh, so i'm relaxed right and i'm open yeah I'm open in the sound yeah and and i'm also fueling it with with the lean of the support so it's not like that i'm actually grabbing but or yeah. making i'm just thinking of it in a smaller more efficient way to get through and um and then you might you know throw a, a good vowel into the thoughts you know yeah, <laughs> of it for sure mm -hmm. are are the sounds different like for example okay you sing roles like tosca right or uh -huh. or even butterfly where there's like heavy dramatic passaggio singing okay uh -huh. and do you have to kind of watch out and temper yourself because there's that temptation to make the sound fat, which actually sounds good, I think, except for the fact. <laughs> yeah, well, maybe. well, to you, maybe. <laughs> I, I would argue yes and no. I would mm -hmm. argue that like there is a way to make a fat passaggio sound that sounds, that also sounds good. However, yeah. Yeah. however, then you're like causing major problems to for your top. Yeah. Like, yeah, it, right. Would you, would you agree? And it gets into wobble land. I think. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. So like, how do you do, like, do you just have to play a mind game with yourself and say, no, I have to say, you got to control that passaggio so that you can open up. <laughs> you <gotta> control it. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, I mean, Unbeldi is a good example. You, I mm -hmm. mean, the, the, actually Unbeldi is on what a G flat hollow passaggio. Yep. Literally right before I sing it, I'm going, in my head, 
And yeah. my muscles are already doing that for me because I'm thinking it, right? Mm -hmm. And I'm taking my breath. And then I can funnel my ooh right into that. It's already set yeah. by, the, by the thinking and the muscle. And then, then you just spin it out. Yeah. Okay. That's awesome. Does, does it sound breathier in your head when it's correct? Or like... Yeah, it, sounds, it sounds a little bit thinner. Thinner. Okay. But it's not, but that's the perception and the sound to yourself is not real. Right. Exactly. I, I go for the, more of the feel and to make sure that it's got the flow. Right. Okay. But, um, yeah, it'll sound more like it's not getting out as much, but it, I know it is like, I, because yeah. I, I, you know, tape all my practice sessions and recordings and stuff. Um, mm -hmm to know like, okay, this feeling actually, when I heard it on recording traveled. Um, yeah. and also then it allowed me to open up if it was a passage or note opening to a high note. So mm -hmm. it's a lot of trust and it's a lot of like analysis, um, mm -hmm. and guidance by, you know, your teacher to, so that you know that you're not, you know, I've never gone so far in one direction where I was too far back or I was too closed. I'm always yeah. being pushed in the, you can go, you can do more, you can go further. You're almost there, but you know, you're, you're still wanting to drive it a little bit too much instead of just letting yeah. it be from you inside, you know? Right. So, yeah. And that brings up a good point. Like when you're singing, like, okay, I'm thinking of your repertoire, like mm -hmm. countess. Mm -hmm. I, I always think of count as I just because that's like my personal bane of my existence <laughs> is balancing <laughs> that whole it's area. Tough. It's tough. People don't think of it as tough, but it's actually very tough. Oh, yeah. It's killer. It's killer. It's killer. And that I call that area pre passaggio, like mm -hmm. especially around that C and the B right there. Mm -hmm. are, are there directional cues that help you? Like, do you think? Do you actively think back, like pulling back, or do you not so, think I mean, that? Just for the dove sono part, um, mm -hmm. I used to actually, I used to over, I used to um, go into passaggio too early. You talk about okay. that ski. I actually now think of it because I was always afraid of going flat, which, yes. which happens so easy because there's this big pause before you start <laughs> this. And then the second time you have to do it really, you know, like... Yeah. So, I mean, now, now the easiest way for me to do is to get connected into my body. And that way is for me to do kind of this uh, sigh that happens that brings me so into myself. Uh, uh, uh. It's, it's um, what's the word? Primordial. It's, um, it's, it's primal. It's a primal. Uh. It, it's so in me, it goes down to my toes. And I actually use that for my, for starting Dove Sono now in my C. You would not think, you would think, oh no, I need to be here, here, here. No, for me, it's like, I just need to get it in my body and then start spinning it out. And it, it works every time. And I'm, I'm not having issues with being flat now because it's just, it comes from me. This is that heart, mind, body connection uh, of not, you know, not trusting who I was and trying to make it and try to be something. And uh, it has to be precious thing. You know, it's, it doesn't have to be precious. It has to be communicative from you. And if you can find where that inner column is that spins out, um, it, it will line up and then you just, you can just speak it. And then, and it comes more from an emotion. It comes more from the emotive place of that chest resonance. Oh, I lost your, I lost your sound. Is it me? Oh, you're, you're on. Um, oh, oh, I'm, <laughs> I lost you. <laughs> this is, uh, this is where I wanted to go about registration actually, hmm. because there are like definite schools of thought on this. Um, personally for me, I believe that there are three registers of the female voice. Mm -hmm. I categorize chest, head and whistle tone. Like that's, yeah. you know, there's some conference on that. But um, I think one of the main uh, discussions, shall we say, is between the balance of the chest voice 
and the head voice. So there are people that are very adamant top down working. Mm -hmm. And then there are people that are very adamant bottom up working. Mm -hmm. what, do you, what do you think on that? I'm a top down. I, I mix a lot of head, head into my chest, but it's, okay. uh, I make sure that I'm not holding anything to be able to do that. Um, mm -hmm. For a long time, I, tr I really kind of cut off my chest residence by thinking I had to really like get in there and get it sturdy and then bring it up. And the opposite ends up ha happening, well, to, to, for me, and that mm -hmm. all of a sudden it, it, it cut off um, some upper resonance and then, mm -hmm. then it, you don't have as much cut through the orchestra. Mm -hmm. So for me, it was actually making sure that that top resonance continues as I'm opening more into the bottom and then it releases, you know, uh -huh. into this. And then, you know, there's also more recitative speaking where you might actually just speak it and just make sure you're, you're open in the, you know, in your mm -hmm. chest and in the, it's almost like the mouth at the, the back of the neck being open when you're right. doing more recitative low stuff. But you know, if I'm, if I'm singing a butterfly, I want to make sure I am way released in, in my mouth and, uh -huh. and open to, to talk down there, but not to put it, but right. and the head is coming down into it. Okay. Very so much. when you're down, when you're going down, mm -hmm. even when you're in what somebody might say chest voice, do yeah. you feel that as chest function or would you categorize it more as head voice function in the feeling? Head voice into that, into the feeling. I mean, it's, I don't go into a true just chest until low B after middle C. Okay. I try to mix my head all the way down to C's unless there's a dramatic, yes. you know, scream or something down yeah. there. You know. That's, those are just like outliers I say <laughs> yeah exactly but if I if I'm mixing through a phrase down down into you know D C sharp C um, mm -hmm. I try to get as much head into that because it connects better into where I was yeah. and also yeah. it just I, it, there's an opening that I feel you know mm -hmm. going back into the into the chest into the neck back neck everything's open but mm -hmm. there's still this resonance coming from the top and the openness mm -hmm. in the bottom. So it's really, it's kind of tricky to, to, to get, but once you start getting it, it, it becomes like a, a muscle. You just kind of know when it's resonating correct for you. Once you, again, like working with audio and, and saying, okay, that's, that's the, the mix that I want. Cause it is kind of a mix. Um, totally. Down. So, yeah. And, and, you know, one of the biggest, like, I guess I would say myths, that I see and hear often is um, people with this light and high singing mm -hmm. and they mistakenly or, or teachers mistakenly or, you know, auditors, whoever's listening, mm -hmm. thinks that that is the head voice. And, and so then the student is being taught, no, you need more chest resonance. You need. But often what's happening is that the student is compensating and they don't have enough head resonance mm -hmm. in the middle. Because I find that when the head voice is really, really like worked out and at its premium, the sound is actually kind of darker. Would you mm -hmm. agree? I agree. I agree. Yeah. It's something um, as I transition more into Spinto, uh, it's I'm finding more of my big girl voice as I, mm -hmm. as I call it. It's, it's in me, um, but because I sang a lot of, more you know Mozart and stuff and not that you can't have that sound in Mozart but I don't I uh you know different points in my career I I went through different awakenings you know um mm -hmm. moving from mezzo to soprano I think I ended up isolating into more of that chiaro sound you know like that you're talking about where uh -huh. where there was a definite shift between because I didn't have enough chest resonance in the in the rest of the voice when I went down it just sounded like another animal right so then, then as you start opening the, the chest resonance a, a bit, um, then it's the balance of the mix of bringing the head into that, right? Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of work that you can do in that different process that you're in. But um, uh, gosh, I forget where I was going with this. But you know, for, for a singer who's doing more of that, that light um, sound, I think it's okay to... to feel like you sound 
dark that it's if it's coming from from you if it's your body that's that's speaking and it's all lined up with head and chest that's the i think the the sound that we really want to go for because it cuts through orchestras it yeah. emotes emotion mm -hmm. better um, it still has that sparkle and, and silver from the top, but it also has the connection to the body. It is chiaroscuro, it's light and dark. You want both of okay. those things together. And I mean, there's a lot of careers that are made just with the chiaro, right? And they're, they're, they're really pretty voices, but it limits, I think, repertoire that you can do when you just have that chiaro. For sure. Um, you just said something interesting that I actually didn't know. You started as a mezzo? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Really? Tell me about that. <laughs> um, I just, I mean, at the time when I was in chorus in high school, um, I was always kind of a good harmonizer. I, mm -hmm. I sing down to low C's and B's, you know, under middle C. And um, so I was always put as second alto in, in choirs. And okay. Um, so I, I developed more of that sound and I, I had high notes, but I, I wasn't very secure in it. So then mm -hmm. when I went to uh, Illinois Wesleyan, it was, um, I, at the time my voice was, you know, developing and growing and I had mm -hmm. a, a relatively sizable instrument. Mm -hmm. And so they just really thought I was more into the going to be uh, Carmen, Delilah, mezzo. Uh, dramatic mezzo. So I did actually try a few of those arias out <laughs> too soon, but um, I, I, um, as I was learning about my voice and developing, the, the tie was coming naturally, and, um, and I did a Met competition when I was 19, mm. and the judges were, were really great in saying, hey, this is what we hear. You you have this bottom, but the top actually has this sparkle and you really need to see where it could go. And I really appreciate that, that, that feedback. And because when I started listening to other recordings and things of real Carmen's, of real Delilah's, mm -hmm. I didn't have that real earthy sound. I didn't. And I thought, yeah. okay, so I see where they're going. So then I, I went to Northwestern for my, my grad degree and there I really learned about more about opera and classical music and being on the stage with it and I did mm -hmm. the spina because it was a good kind of shift between you know it's fish and Bach and um and I kind of I started transitioning with the teacher there to soprano repertoire and mm -hmm. did um crucible and Abigail Williams and crucible and I did Magda and Rondonet in English wow <laughs> <laughs> yeah. tricky yeah but um <laughs> But it was, you know, it was, it was showing me kind of a, a, a possibilities. And so I just kept going with the, the soprano repertoire. Yeah. And then I did kind of go through voice change where my, my voice shifted higher. I mean, women's voices, you know, we work, they, they shift hormonally like every seven years. Mine shifted yeah. higher. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and then I learned more about how to use it better. And then, um, yeah, so I was able to sing like baby doe and things like that. Yes. And, um, mm -hmm. So, and I've always been kind of a chameleon singer also. So mm -hmm. that's, that's another tricky subject, but um, yeah, it's because chameleon singers can either look like, you know, how to use your voice in different ways for different colors, or you can look a hot mess. So and, and <laughs> it goes really quick between the two. <laughs> yes. Yes. Absolutely. And I find <laughs> chameleon singers are very good at incorporating new techniques. And yeah. this is actually a problem mm -hmm. in the sense that they can be swayed by one thought uh -huh. and immediately have a change in technique almost instantaneously. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, and I mean, as, as singers, you know, young singers, when we get feedback, the impulse is to follow all the feedback. And sometimes what you need to do is just take your feedback and say thank you for your feedback and then build piles and see what piles higher and then address those issues, you know, because feedback is wonderful. We'd love to get it, but it also can lead you in, in this way that you don't know who you are as a singer. And yeah. 
it's so important to know who you are because if you don't know who you are, nobody else is going to know who you are. You're not going to sell anything. <laughs> so this is, this is so true. Oh my goodness. I, I remember I did a lesson, a coaching with Jennifer Larmore and mm -hmm. you know, I said, well, I can sing this and I can sing this and I can sing this. And I, she goes, well, what do you want to sing? What do you like to sing? Because if you don't like it, you're not, you're going to have a hard time convincing anybody else to like it. And I'm like, you know, that's so true. You know, I can sing that, but I don't like to, and I'm going to show that I don't like to. Yep. So, oh yeah, that's, that is a very good out. point. <laughs> and I was actually reading, there was there, um, in the group, somebody was writing a really fantastic discussion about this and Fach and how Fach not only has to line up with our actual instruments, but Fach is often, especially when we're talking about sub fox, okay, not, not like, you know, the big fox, but mm -hmm. sub fox are often a question of temperament. And then from there, you can kind of develop the skills of the fox. I mean, obviously a soubrette's not going to become a dramatic, but within that, there's a lot of room for oh, what's yeah. going to happen. Oh yeah. And it, um, especially sometimes if you, if you work in a fest position, you, that those, I mean, you, you might sell yourself as one thing in, in a box when you, when you go to audition, but that box and the, and the line of what you're going to actually be sing, singing gets blurred because mm -hmm. they, they might need to tick off, you know, like they've got their kind of things they need filled and they don't want to bring in a guest and they see who do I have and what possibilities it have. And so that your fuck gets stretched yeah. um, and you just have to know whether or not you can handle that. So right. like there's, there's some roles that I sing that were, you know, more mezzo soprano roles. Um, or I, I did go into the, I got to try out some spinto roles because they needed that. Um, mm -hmm. And that was cool too, because then I saw, oh, this, this is opening. Like my, I, I see my voice is changing. And um, yeah, so you have yeah. to kind of be open for that totally. challenge too, that you might be asked to sing something that's not in that box. So. Well, well, even like thinking about, okay, your, your work in Constanza, like, you know, mm. that's your, although I know you can sing that, that's not like, when I think of your Fox, that's not like your Fox, but you did, you did that successfully. Mm -hmm. um, I'd love you to maybe talk briefly about access to the tippy top. Uh -huh. How do you do that as a fuller voice? What, what are some, you know, I mean, ideas the, that help you? The key is passaggio. The okay. key was I have to set it up. If, if yeah. I'm way too wide up there and, and big, I can't do it. But not that I want to think squeaky and, and light. I'm still full up there, but okay. I'm not, I've, I've done my narrowing work before, before getting, getting up there. And then it, you know, then you're just, you know, you're riding a wave okay. of D's sometimes on, in good sense, all right. Yeah. Um, and, and it is about fueling not only the technique, but it's about getting your emotion connected to that too. Because mm -hmm. sometimes when you when you line up the technique with what your what the emotion is, it it will find its path. Also, uh, it'll mm -hmm. find its way. Because if you think too much technique, you can you can kind of get too much into thinking. Yeah. And so you do want to do your planning, you want to do your practicing, and then you need to let it go and and get into the emotion on stage, and. Um, because you've already done the muscle training. So yeah. the, I think this is a really good segue into mm -hmm. what I said I wanted to say for the end, which is this heart, body, mind connection. Because mm -hmm. you're, you're talking about this right now. And I think, mm -hmm. oh my goodness, like if only I had known this 10 years ago, this is so unbelievably important. Can you talk about this? Yeah. Um, I mean, we... We want to make sure we are, there's, this is such a great time for us to, to be able to really uh, go deep into ourselves and figure out how we work, what we want to do. And it's, it's a renaissance really for, for musicians because we can't do our craft and be work, work, working and caught into that um, kind of, you know, hamster wheel where we're got to learn, learn the role really quick, get it up on its feet, get it connected, you know, into character and up on the stage. This is, we are at home. We are, we are looking for opportunities to grow. And, um, 
for, for me, I've done a lot of work in, in these last few months about really getting my heart center open, about getting knowing who I am, about aligning these, these chakras that come into effect with our singing. The, yeah. you know, like the, the um, let's see, which chakras do it? We use the earth chakra for the pelvic floor, right? And we use the heart chakra to, to know who we are and to get connected into our chest resonance. And we use the, the crown chakra mm -hmm. to, to get into the, um, the spiritual realm yeah. and, you know, that the chiaro part of our chiaro scuro. So it's this balance. And you, if you're caught up in any of these places, that now's the time to figure it out. If you might have something that happened to you in your life, um, like, you know, for me, I had, I had to work through my, my trauma with my um, being in the hospital for three weeks with an 11 year, 11 month old you know, at home and a husband at home. And, you know, uh, that was something that sent me into, uh, you know, just operating and always in a, a frenzied uh, way that I was closed off to. And so coming in contact with a great teacher at the time who recognized what I was doing, kind of operating in this emergency, you know, I have to do this, I have to do that kind of thing. And to just kind of be with the feelings open back up um, and, yeah. to, you know, get whatever therapies work for you. It could be EFT tapping, which is new to me now, which I, I'm actually, yes. <laughs> Yay! I'm starting to get into that. I mean, it could be yoga, it could be meditation. I just did a mm -hmm. 21 day meditation with um, Deepak Chopra, which oh was amazing about abundance because we abundance is a, a good topic for singers, allowing mm -hmm. the abundance of breath, abundance of things to come to you in your career, abundance of mm -hmm. money, because we as singers need to, to be okay with making money for something we think, it, you know, or others might think are, is something fun for us, but it's not fun. It's our career, right? Mm -hmm. So <laughs> it is fun, <laughs> but it also is our business. So uh, there's all these opportunities to grow as, as people to open our, our souls and our minds and our voices. So mm -hmm. um, that, I mean, that's the work that I, I'm doing with my teacher right now. I, yeah. I, feel like I've grown a lot in, in the last few months um, of knowing who I am as a singer and mm -hmm. what I want as a singer and what I want to sound like and what I want to yeah. do going forward. And I think that's what we can do right now. And yeah. Because the, the people who will be auditioning us um, are going to be appreciative that we did that work because they want that too. Everybody wants yeah. to be live again. You know, mm -hmm. we are doing mm -hmm. it in a way outside, you know, outside concerts are happening now and yeah. um, online. People are doing some great stuff online. Mm -hmm. But if you're at a place where you don't, you're not doing that yet, or you're not in a place where you feel comfortable yet to share online or to be outside sharing your, your gift and your business, then, then now's the time to do the inner work and, um, yeah, and get excited about the time when you can do it again for an audience. So, yeah. So, the last <laughs> the last question I'd like to ask you yeah. is, what is your desert island vocalese? So the one vocalese, yes, that, that you that. have to do if you have like five minutes to get ready. Mm -hmm. It's a hum. Okay. It's a hum. Um, I work in, in octaves mm -hmm. and I start it, you know, first I find my, my, um, my chest resonance mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and Ooh, then that's a nice I chest go, voice. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but I have a lot, I still have head in there, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but it's that primal, it's that yeah. primal, right? And then I start like maybe on a D above middle C, um, mm -hmm. and I might, I don't but I won't do that now because I can't really find it, but it's around here. Here, I'll give it to you. Oh, yeah, I was a little bit lower. And 
I just hum an octave very, it's gonna, it's not out. It's totally about being in and light. It's not about trying to make something. It's just about being in the body and letting it spin up and come back down very slowly. And I do that, I do that going down as low as I can go. And then I do just a couple, you know, going through the passage where I, you know, really are concentrating on narrowing, um, you know, getting that, that ooh thoughts in my head and that, mm -hmm. you know, um, baby thing and <laughs> the baby thing. Uh, and yeah, I mean, if I only had one exercise, I could, I could do that from the, you know, the, all the way down and all the way up yeah. and and know that my voice would function. And I do, I have done that before where it's, you know, you, know, awesome. you don't have a place. And the cool thing about this exercise is you don't need to be very loud anywhere. So if right. you're in a, a, you know, studio where you're doing an audition, you could really do it in the corner without bothering anybody. Cause it's, it's really just for yourself and about getting the, you know, the, everything lined up. Yeah. Yeah. That's awesome. Thanks. Um, I, I'm definitely going to be trying that when, you know, you have these awkward audition situations over in Germany and you're like, you know, have no space to warm up at all. <laughs> and well, now they're with... getting better. They're getting better. They give you breakfast rooms and like the, that's good. I mean, it depends if it's for agents, you're right. No, right. <laughs> no, no place like home. But, uh, there, when you're, when you audition for houses, it's a different yeah. experience. It's, you yeah. get a, usually you get a practice room. You get um, like uh, 10 minutes with the accompanist. And mm -hmm. I mean, it really feels like the spa, you know, the club med of, of uh, plus you're of not auditions. Time, of auditions. <laughs> and you're on you're not, stage. you're not in NOLA crammed in together. <laughs> oh God, I tell you that bless NOLA, but um, that, that was a difficult, it's, it's hard for singers to sing in NOLA and oh yeah auditioners too because you're right on top of people and it, it's such a closed in space and it's not often <laughs> yeah. for opera <laughs> but no it worked I guess <laughs> so so Becky tell us first of all where we can mm -hmm. find you as a singer and I also want you to tell us about the awesome company that you have yeah cool okay so as a singer I'm on rebeccadavis.org Mm -hmm. and you know there's there's some sound clips on there and things that I was up to but hopefully will be up more things will be posted as things are happening but um, my main focus right now is on softly loud artists mm -hmm. and I put together myself with three other conductors coaches um, and we have been doing a master class all summer on Saturdays, although this this week we're doing one on Friday because it works better for the guests that we have and with the holiday weekend in the US. Um, but we're doing master classes that are more like lectures in that people are coming on and you know, first we, we worked with our coaches and they were they talked about specific things that they like to specialize in. Um, you know, Maya Maya did like an auditions uh, lecture. Um, and we we're going through these different topics that I think are educational for singers, but also career options too. Because for me, I wish I would have had more direction and knowing what options were available to me. And such as, you know, maybe a teacher would say, you would do well in Germany, period. And then you're like, what does that mean? You know, so what we get into some of that a bit. Um, there are other options uh, such as, let's see, I had an agent, um, my agent, Sam Crum came on and, you know, said about what it's like to work with agents. And also, you know, he kind of gave us some insight into what's happening in our world right now for singers and agents. For example, agents are, are forming a coalition worldwide coalition to help singers um, to, uh, you know, especially with all the cancellations going on, it's important that we all um, are being treated fairly in the industry. And so the agents are fighting for singers in that, in that cancellation fees become more regulated um, because they are not. So um, the other thing is, you know, masterclass wise, 
I'm, I'm bringing in um, Gregory Kunda. He's had a very great successful career and, you know, hearing from him is going to be inspirational for singers who are, you know, maybe they're established singers, but they, they want to get to the next level. And, you know, he was able to do that with his career. Um, we have a chorus master from Hanover Staatsoper coming on Friday. And so he's going to talk about the core career because that is so stable. Uh, if you can get one of these coveted positions, because um, I mean, in Germany, what's great is there's a lot of uh, opera houses here and, and the need for core is um, pretty big, but um, they, they want very, very, very good singers in that core. And so he's going to come on and talk about what he's listening for in a core um, artist. And also I'm having a friend of mine who was a spiel tenor, Patrick Jones. And he worked for many, many years in Germany as a soloist and then decided to go into a core career um, because he wanted that stability and security. And although, you know, a fest career does provide some stability, there's uh, turnover in management um, that can, you know, kind of send you out back into the um, freelance business, which I am kind of in right now, which is fine. I mean, you can freelance in Germany pretty uh, easily because you can jump in for roles and and that's the other thing so that the function of the agents also very important because you can have agents for different markets if if everybody is okay with that you know you have to have that discussion with your agents so but as far as so that's kind of the master class we're going to be doing contemporary opera one also how to work with living composers and how that is also very good um, market for singers um, because they usually fuel more than one engagement if you if you get in on the ground floor of a contemporary uh, new opera um, we're going to be doing that and would you mock auditions for for the coaches and you know these coach conductors are working in the field and they are casting um, people so it's it's an opportunity for people to sing for them and work with them and I'm also launching, besides the membership, um, besides these master classes, I'm going to be starting two groups, some group work, because I have benefited from group work this summer, uh, or this spring and a summer. And really, there's this energy that flows and builds when you're working in a group of people who have like a common goal and a common transformation in mind. So I am forming two groups. Um, one of them is for established professionals, mainly in Europe, although there's, um, there's wiggle room depending on people that, I, that I've been talking to. But this one is one where we really figure out who we are as a singer and what we wanna offer, how we present ourselves, what materials we present, our websites, how do, how do we come across? Because sometimes it takes the fact of, of a group coming together and you saying, this is what I want to present. And there's a disconnect maybe of what really is being put out there about you. So this group is going to be about leveling up and we're going to start um, week of July 20th. So if anybody's interested um, in getting in a conversation and seeing if that might be a group that can work for you, let me know. We've got um, six weeks, a six week program doing that. And then and also just to I'm be clear, oh, ahead. sorry, just to be clear about that program, that is for professional level singers who either are in Europe or want to come to Europe. Is that yes. correct? Yes, that's correct. Um, there's also going to be an opportunity. We have some agents who are working as consultants for us, and they can present on one on one. Um, uh, in when they're in the group, they will also be working one on one with different agents. Um, on also again perception and getting some feedback from those agents so we will be crafting that together that special sauce as I, i'm calling it right now you know finding your special sauce marketing that special sauce and then seeing if it's if it's gonna gel with with these agent consultants and then you know having kind of this transformation where you're ready to present it especially um going into new audition seasons this fall and um, you know into the spring, because the audition season now runs so, a very long time. Um, so 
that is one group. And the other group is called Life in the Fest Lane. So this is for <laughs> mainly for, for singers who are coming from a, a long distance who, I mean, I did, I did one audition tour myself, would like um, to also be honing their, their um, you know, materials that they're presenting also in, in different languages, you know, getting those things honed. Um, introduction to some agents already, also doing some consulting and learning what it's like to work fest in Germany, Austria, Switzerland. Um, because I think, I think you have to know of all the, the options that you have and the, the benefits, the, you know, there's also things that are, um, that you have to be aware of. And so we will be also working in the same time frame because I want to do this before kind of the audition season starts. This will be also be working July 20th through the end of August. And um, we'll be meeting once a week, but there will also be support that, that goes continuously. There'll be some homework to do. There'll be, you know, some people are already in this group. They're already getting ready um, sound and video materials. Um, that we're going to be reviewing together and make sure that everything is, um, people feel really confident in what they're presenting come this new audition season. So that, I mean, those are kind of the two things and um, just contact me for, for a chat. That's pretty yeah. much what we do. I get to know you. I listen. I get mm -hmm. to see the goals and then we see if you might fit into, into one of these two groups that's going, mm -hmm. but also have I have some other clients that um, don't fit into these two groups, but they um, we're still working on their goals together. And eventually yeah. I'll probably have another group that's focused for them. So, but those are the, the two groups that we're going to do this summer. Wonderful. Well, that is great. I'll post all that info so you all can see that and contact Becky for a consult because she knows a lot about this stuff and she can really help you find what you're looking for and looking for in a career and she can help kind of work with you to find that so for all of you watching thank you so much for being here with us and it was a pleasure to have you becky I can't wait to, to see here. thank you <laughs> yeah. can't wait to see all this wonderful work that you're doing both on stage and off thank you you too <laughs> <laughs> take care Thank <laughs> you.